What's up guys, my mini PC is here, so let's unbox it. I have ordered the Mini S series from Billing, so let's test it out. I found the cheapest mini PC with an Intel 11 Gen CPU and put it to the test for you. I paid $160 for this on Amazon at a discounted price, as usually it's around $180. We've got here the Billing Mini S with an Intel Celeron N5095 CPU which has 4 cores and 4 threads and a maximum frequency of 2.8 GHz. The CPU was launched in 2021 and it's based on a 10 nanometer fabrication process with a 15 watt TDP. Rest of the specs include an 8 GB DDR4 RAM, a 128 GB SSD, 5 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4. As you can see it's pretty small and the case is made out of a matte blue plastic with the shiny B-Link logo on the top. On both sides we have the air vents for cooling, on the front there are two USB 3 ports, the microphone or headphone jack and the power button. There is actually also a blue LED that shows when the mini PC is turned on and a clear CMOS pinhole. The back houses another two USB 3 ports, the gigabit LAN port, two HDMI ports that support 4K at 60Hz, the power supply connection and the Kensington lock port if you use it in an office space. There is also an air vent on the top of the backplate, because this mini PC is actually actively cooled by a little fan which blows into a radiator and you can feel the heat coming out from here. I like the fact that it's upgradable so you can change the M2 SSD with a bigger one up to 2TB, it has a SATA port to add another 2.5 inch SSD inside the case and you can also replace the RAM with a 16GB plate. The power usage is very low with a maximum of 36 watts. In the box we also get some accessories like two HDMI cables of different lengths, the bracket to mount it on the back of a monitor and the power adapter. The main uses for my mini PC would be a Plex server for my personal music and movie collection and play movies through HDMI directly to my TV without the need to transfer them to a USB hard drive. Also, I can avoid getting a gaming console because you can actually connect a controller to this mini PC and play some games and I will show you how. But first, let's open it up and add a 2TB SSD to extend the storage. Ok, now that we have enough space, let's put it through some tests. They say this CPU is actually 17% faster than the previous gen Celeron CPU. I have managed to get a score of 774 points, so almost 17% faster. CPU temperatures vary from around 50 degrees Celsius while idle to under 80 degrees under sustained load. Normally this should not present an issue over time because of the integrated cooling. Also, SSD temps are decent as you can see around 35 Celsius for the M2 drive and around 50 degrees for the SATA drive. The operating noise levels are extremely low, you can only hear the fan when it boots. Using this mini PC for browsing and YouTube playback even at 4K works fast enough. Even when installing apps and doing the usual stuff in office apps I did not notice any delays.
To test the video playing skills, let's open the 140 megabit Jellyfish file. As you can see, it plays without any issues. Now testing with the 200 megabit file, it also plays without issues. The ultimate test, the 400 megabit file, now also coded with 10-bit HDR, also plays with no hiccups and for all the video files I've tested, we have around 40% usage in GPU and 50-70% to CPU usage. So it does use a lot of the integrated Intel UHD graphics to be able to render smoothly. Also, I did not encounter any issues while playing movies from the Plex server or while playing 4K content with high bitrate. So this CPU is great for movies and you are only limited by the speed of your network. Speaking of network speeds, I do recommend using the Gigabit port as it's much faster than the Wi-Fi and it does work with Gigabit speeds while transferring files locally. And I could only get a maximum of 250 Megabit per second on Wi-Fi 5. The supplied M2 SSD is fast enough with the typical 500 Megabyte per second speeds, so it will not be a limiting factor. Also, on the SATA port you get the same speeds. Regarding playing PC games on this mini PC, unfortunately the integrated graphics cannot handle AAA titles. You will have an average experience even with old games on this mini PC as you cannot reach 30 FPS. Testing first with the GTA 5 which was launched 10 years ago. A 720p resolution is barely playable running with an average of 20 FPS. Even with a game like Skyrim, which was launched in 2011, it still hovers under 20 FPS. There is another version of this CPU, the Intel N5105, which has 24 execution units for the GPU instead of 16, and also dual channel RAM. Skyrim works better on this one, especially because of the dual channel RAM, but you still can play AAA titles. This mini PC can still be a gaming machine if you use cloud gaming and connect it to a TV, specifically Xbox Cloud Gaming. I have connected an Xbox controller via Bluetooth and tested with the Gaming Pass Ultimate, which allows game streaming. Let's test some games like Forza 4, Star Wars Squadrons and Mortal Kombat 11 and see how they perform using a cable connection. The games run perfectly fine and the CPU usage is really low, so this mini PC could be a nice console replacement for cloud gaming. This is Captain Lyndon Javes of the Galactic Empire. Prepare for immediate inspection. And this is Vostar Haven Station Master. Kindly avoid harassing my customers. If they cooperate, they'll be fine. Pilot, proceed. <laughs> As a conclusion, I think this mini PC is a great overall package that can be used for movie streaming, game streaming and also as a network storage. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and as always, if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.